Hello everyone. In one of my previous videos, I talked about tools I use all the time for business analysis, and I mentioned PowerPoint. In this video, I will demonstrate how I use it to facilitate meetings. Why PowerPoint? Lately, there was an explosion of virtual collaboration tools like Mural and Miro, and I will be the first one to say that these tools are very powerful and extensible. I use them as well for training, for facilitation, especially when planning long sessions, such as a day-long workshop. However, not all organizations can afford licenses or will be ready to spend money on a specialized tool. The best tools in real life are those that are widely accepted across the organization, and this is why it is so hard to beat Excel and SharePoint. Another reason I support simple tools is that sometimes you just need a quick solution when you're new in the organization. You may not have had time to explore what other tools are out there. PowerPoint is usually readily available and a quick way to start. You can also end up in a meeting that you didn't have time to prepare for. For example, someone says, hey, we should really use a business analyst in that meeting and next thing you know, you are invited or even asked to facilitate. PowerPoint can be used pretty much without preparation. However, imagine you are actually preparing for a first time meeting, maybe a discovery meeting, such as the ones I talked about in my video about a day in life of a business analyst. Let me share my screen with you and show you what I would do to use PowerPoint to facilitate a meeting. All right. So here is my PowerPoint screen. I'm not going to be in the presentation mode because we will be working on it together. If I'm preparing for a meeting, so I have some plans, I would actually create a little template for myself. If I didn't have time to prepare, I'll just open a new presentation. In this case, I just have this template and uh, on the title page, I mentioned the topic say we are having a discovery workshop about a particular project it's always nice to have a title page to remind everyone what's going on you can add here um, the date or even the names of the people who participate next i always try to put some kind of an agenda in. perhaps the meeting invitation already had an agenda if not, it's nice to put something in your PowerPoint if you are responsible for facilitating the meeting. If you really didn't have time to prepare, you can even do it on the fly. So in agenda for a discovery meeting, you may start with recapping project goal, talk about what you already know, perhaps mention stakeholders, start talking about key pain points and so on. And it's of course, very easy to do it. And this PowerPoint um, as a tool is really helpful when you're doing a virtual meeting or a hybrid meeting. Because remember, there is nothing worse than having a virtual meeting where participants are all on and there is nothing shared. It's just a few people's avatars or video feeds and you're talking, but there is no visual feedback. There is no second a simultaneous stream of information. And that is very tiring in virtual meetings and, and not very productive. People think much better if they both discuss things and see some points captured visually. It actually helps them to stay more engaged. So always, always try to have something shared as you are facilitating a virtual meeting. So you have an agenda, you can always amend it during the meeting as you go. That's totally fine. That's part of facilitation, just as if you were writing things on a whiteboard. After that, you might recap where we are. Like, why are we having this meeting? What's going on? These are things we have done. These are the things we want to do today. And then after that, it will help us to do the next task. So just a little reminder about what is happening. So perhaps as part of the introduction, you suggest that today we can talk about main stakeholders of this initiative, main pain points that you want to share, as well as existing systems and processes. And then it will help us to plan analysis tasks. For example, we will plan up next meetings. We will discuss deliverables and so on. And that will help us to do the actual requirements analysis and uh, whatever is the format in which you want to do it. Maybe you will talk about user story mapping, 
you will talk about requirements workshops, building a backlog, and so on. So this little map just helps everyone recap why you're having this meeting. Then you can go ahead uh, to the next topic in your agenda, which was stakeholders. And here my favorite trick is control D. I, I'll make copies of the slides of the starter slides I created in advance. And I'll say, okay, let's capture stakeholders. And you might just wanna go with a bullet list and uh, mention the different stakeholders your project will have, maybe marketing, sales, finance, product team, and so on. If you are having a conversation and you have a bit of a debate or you're not sure of what is the right thing to do, you can always use colors. So you can highlight things. Uh, if you're unsure, you can add tasks. For example, you can tag a person and say, please confirm. And usually if you store these PowerPoints in a shared area, for example, if you use in SharePoint, Microsoft Teams, tagging someone by the username will actually send them a notification. So that becomes a bit of your meeting notes as well. Uh, if you are in need of capturing more, you can say for product team, which group uh, do you want to talk next? So as you're facilitating the meeting, you're also capturing actions, capturing notes and capturing whatever needs to be done with the results of this meeting next. And it is visual so everyone can see it. All right. So say you talked about stakeholders. What else can you do? Maybe you want to discuss the context of this problem or of this particular process you're discussing. If this is your first time having a meeting or discovery, you may even do a little diagram, very simple context diagram. You'll say, well, can you tell me a little bit about this process and the, ma the main interactions? For example, this is your process that you are analyzing. You can uh, give it just keep it as a simple box and then ask your stakeholders about a various other entities that it interacts with. You can give these different styles. Uh, for example, you can say, well, we are interacting with a customer. Then you use the same favorite trick, Control D, to create boxes of the same size. And it's very easy to do this when you're virtually facilitating your body in front of the screen. You have this PowerPoint open. You can use a, quick, a few quick shortcuts. So either you use Control D or you use hold Control and drag. You create copies. And then in here, you start adding labels. For example, marketing channels or distribution channel. And maybe you want to include here a regulator. Is there a regulator that is interested in this process? Maybe your finance team needs to receive uh, information. Uh, depending on what the process is, let's say there is also internal audit. Even if you don't create arrows, because arrows are a little bit more fiddly, of course, if you can do it easily but if you don't want to do it that's fine you can just include boxes or maybe you can have some labels for example if you want to describe what's the relationship between customer and process you can describe the relationship you can do the um, lines later or arrows so even doing these simple labels is helpful during the meeting because everyone can see it Everyone can contribute your validation that you're using the right labels and you're creating a little picture. Another example, what you can do when you facilitate a virtual meeting is create a quick use case diagram. And again, don't think that it's very taxing. If you have a template, and by the way, you can download my free template. I'll post uh, the um, link in the description. If you're using this template, you can literally grab the few elements you can even create a template in advance like this and uh, leave the labels empty or rename it. And whatever system you're describing or whatever process, you can just say, well, let's discuss the main use cases. What are your main problems? And you quickly select and type 
and you can quickly type the new names of your actors and suddenly you have a little use case diagram right there in front of the eyes and that also helps facilitation. So what I wanted to um, bring up is just a reminder that any type of visual facilitation, even if it's very simple with PowerPoint, even if you type with errors and you have to correct the typo, it is still so much better than just having up that dark screen in front of everyone and them straining to listen or stopping to listen. So don't be afraid of doing this a bit of a life uh, modeling and uh, screen sharing. Try to make that screen sharing lively, not just a bullet after bullet after bullet, but maybe a little picture, a little scribble. You can even scribble things. Sometimes what I would do is, if I am not prepared, I would just go into the draw mode and I'll pick a diagram and I'll say, okay, so you have this system here and you have this, another system where the data flows, right? And you can draw a couple of boxes, you can type things, you can add stuff. And you know what happens? A little bit of magic happens because even this chicken uh, scratch drawings or little scribbles or even something childish still keeps the attention of your participants to this shared screen. It keeps them a little bit more engaged even if they laugh. It doesn't matter. What matters to you as a facilitator is that people are engaged, your stakeholders are aware of what is happening they are with you they are not distracted they are not on another phone they are not typing something else and visualization during your meeting really helps this facilitation so whether you use powerpoint or maybe you use word or you're very skilled with collaboration tools or you use virtual whiteboard all of those work i just wanted to use powerpoint today as an example and just another thing to remind you that uh, tools like PowerPoint have lots of templates. So if you really wanted to go and create something almost ready, you can go, you can look into smart art, you can pick one of these uh, templates and just click on them and use it during your meeting. So for example, if you wanted to draw a really quick process and you're not really good at fiddling with this uh, rectangles, just select one of the smart art and type your steps, step, final step, and result, and whatever you want to call it. And it's really, it takes you the same time as just typing something as bullet points, but now it looks like a little picture, okay? So that is really helpful. It's visual, it helps you become a better facilitator. And believe me, it, once you start practicing it, even if you do one, two of those virtual facilitations a week, you can quickly become better, more skillful, and it just becomes a second nature to you. And people will really, really like your meetings because it, they are much easier to follow. So hopefully you can use this virtual facilitation with PowerPoint or with another tool you love in your next meeting. And until next time.